Welcome everyone. We're having a conversation about COVID-19 and the Christian response. We know that this is in some ways the worst of times and the best of times. It is a very scary time to be out and about, but it has also provides some unprecedented opportunities for the um, Christian community and for the kingdom of God. I have around me some people who have agreed to have a conversation and we just wanna start off with the first question. And the first uh, thing I think all of us realize is that there's a temptation to be cynical about the government restrictions and all the things coming down the pike uh, for what we can and can't do and that's sort of filtered over on into the church and my question is how should people deal with that um, is the church supposed to obey all the laws is it wrong for them to obey all the laws what do you think about how the church is dealing with canceling services and all those issues yeah that's it's a great question I think um you know, the Bible talks a lot about the importance of obeying our leaders, respecting those in authority, and um, as much as possible. Obviously, there are times when governments call us to do something that's contrary to our conscience or contrary to our faith as Christians, and we can't do that. But um, as much as is possible, uh, we understand that they're a gift from God as authorities and therefore are good. And so therefore, when they lay down some boundaries, uh, we should try to do everything we can to obey the laws, to respect their counsel and the, and the uh, advice they're giving us. So that's my approach as I talk to Christians uh, at this point is really encouraging them you know, according to Romans 13, this is the calling of the believers to to listen to those in authority. And so I think the other thing I would say to that is recognize that the intent of everybody, everybody is way beyond their pay grade at this point with this COVID-19, right? We all feel inadequate. We all feel uh, not, you know, capable of really giving all the answers we should in the midst of this, whether it's medical, physical, spiritual answers, emotional answers. And I'm, I think the government is there as well. They're doing their best. Their intent is to help us. And uh, by sort of lowering and, and stretching out this curve, as everybody talks about it, uh, dealing and taking this radical action, asking us not to meet in groups, to social distance, you know, do all those things. So I think we need to see the intent of our government and understand where they're coming from and do everything we can as Christians to support that and follow the counsel that they're giving us. Uh, I say to Christians who struggle with this, and maybe even struggle with us canceling services and these kinds of things, uh, I think this needs to be done out of faith, not fear, right? We're not canceling services because we're fearful. We're canceling services out of love for the most vulnerable in our community. And the Bible has a lot to say about protecting the most vulnerable. Uh, the scriptures will use identities like the orphan and the widow and the poor and the disenfranchised. Um, and so we need to recognize that's the group that's the most vulnerable here. Many other people will be asymptomatic and won't, won't even be affected by this. But that group, it, it could be deadly for them. So we want everybody to do this so that that group doesn't get infected and doesn't get uh, impacted in a, in, a, in a deadly way by this. So, so yeah, I, I totally support our government, our leaders. Obviously, I don't think everything they're saying is 100% is accurate because they're just making their best informed, educated uh, decisions here. That's all they can do, and that's, and that's, that's good. So. It's probably kind of important to realize that it's not forever. Like no, the exactly. The church yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's a really good point because if they were calling us mm -hmm. never to meet again mm -hmm. as believers mm -hmm. or asking us, you know, to say you guys can't gather as Christians and you can't teach the Bible, blah, blah, that would be something mm -hmm. very different. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, that's not at all their intent. Mm -hmm. Their intent is really to protect us, and we need to see that. Mm -hmm. So these times bring a lot of fear, uh, especially as it pertains to our children. They're, all their activities are being canceled. I know my daughter's gymnastics was canceled. You, you can't go to jump on the trampolines with the group anymore. You can't go to school anymore. So a lot of fear trickles down to our, our kids. Can you speak into that? Um, how do we help our kids navigate this time without being uh, overwhelmed with anxiety and fear? Yeah. <clears throat> I think one of the, I think to start, and it's probably not starting with our kids, it's starting with ourselves. Um, I think as a, as a parent, um, I'm the best dad, I'm the best 
um, husband I can be when I'm closest to the Lord. Um, taking time in God's word um, and really helps me or helps us self-check our anxiety and our fears. Um, and then God, I think through that is so personal, which then we share with our kids. Um, and um, I think as a parent, one of the things that uh, we really struggle with is there's so much information and not every, um, you know, not all the information is true either. Right. Um, I've heard some ridiculous things floating around that I just go, you really believe that? Well, let's go check the source on that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's given us a, a, a really uh, a great window to really point our kids to um, discover what truth is and to not just believe everything you hear. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, because it is, as parents, trying to help our kids navigate, uh, you know, the panic, the fear, the anxiety. Yeah. And um, usually a lot of that is the uncertainties and the lies that are out there, um, which then brings back to um, spending time in God's work. And I even, I even just know for myself this week, because this is real for us, um, where God has just laid a verse on my, on my heart, and I was able to share it with my, with my son. And it was just a, a, a great way to show how God is relational in my life, and it will be in yours, and just trusting in him. Um, uh, what was the verse? Mm -hmm. Oh, the verse was in Colossians um, 4, verse uh, 5 and 6. And uh, in the midst, and I can't even re uh, paraphrase it, but it was um, just watching how people are reacting to the situation. It was be really careful about how we, what we say and we give encouraging words yeah. to one another um, because there's part of me that wants to go, people are, you know, and they are um, uh, unstable mm -hmm. um, because um, what they have tried to control is no longer in their control. Yeah. And uh, just sharing that with, with my son was just really helpful. To, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, Dad, yeah, you're right. So what are we going to do with our time with our kids? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to, um, one is to uh, put some sort of structure in. Yeah. Um, you know, we've kind of, my son and we've kind of structured it. He needs to be up before 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, How he, has he reacted to that? <laughs> so far, um, it's been a little bit of a pushback yeah. because he feels he should be, you know, he's not going to school. Why, yeah. why do I, you know, why can't I just sleep in? Yeah. But we really looked at um, some of the importance of uh, his physical health, mm. you know, his mental and his spiritual. Yeah. And one of the things that we know is that, uh, um, you know, if it's left to ourselves, we're going to waste time. Right. And our kids are good at wasting time. And it's usually on the video games. Screen it's time, usually yeah. screen time, mm -hmm. which is the very thing that we should be really protecting and uh, getting, giving some regulations around that because we really don't want them to get a lot of misinformation. Right. Or, um, uh, the other thing is, you know, we, putting it, we establish some chores, some things that are pro productive around the house. Um, I've even gone as far as, um, so what is it that you would like to learn? Mm -hmm. We really haven't come up with that yet. He's a 14-year-old <laughs> teenage boy. Um, video games. But, <laughs> video games. Um, but something that will begin to exercise the mind. Yeah. And then, um, of course, uh, getting outside, um, uh, whether that be walking the dog or just getting some fresh air. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so really sort of establishing some, some routine um, for his life and ours. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I think like even when you talk about the, the shift from fear towards truth, and we can even think of like faith in that area. Uh, when I think of students sitting at home, even over March break and not having right. something to do, mm -hmm. they're in their rooms alone mm -hmm. with their phones. Mm -hmm. uh, not only are, do they have access to uh, things that aren't true surrounding this COVID-19 thing, but now that sort of indefinitely they can look forward and just think that they're going to be sitting in their rooms regularly with uh, temptation surrounding mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And, and I would just say that I think sometimes the, the danger in these situations when we see like a physical ailment like this, a viral outbreak, mm -hmm. uh, we can think that it's purely physical mm -hmm. and not recognize the, this, the real spiritual dangers for yeah. all of us, uh, right. but specifically our kids. Mm -hmm. And in that, I, I would say too, is just like, uh, if you're a parent, uh, connect with your student over this. Yeah. Help them move from questions of fear mm -hmm. towards uh, confident realities that we have in Jesus. Um, and also, just like we were saying before, uh, it's not going to be forever. Mm -hmm. And to really long for the gathering of the, the church together. Right. Uh, dream for the day that you get back and you can like mm -hmm. hug your friend at youth, you know. Yeah. It's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is tempting, you know, when you've got so much time on your hands just to kind of allow a whole bunch of like 
informal things to just happen where they're just always on the screen. You go, well, yeah. it's because of the circumstances we can't. But then that can reinforce some really negative, you know, thinking, error, uh, emotional, uh, you know, distress because they're they're listening to and watching negative things over and over and over again, which then you know takes them to a not an unhealthy place, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that I love that idea of structure and just you know obviously it's. It's, 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 it's an abnormal situation. Mm -hmm. So you got to make some allowances for that and give some liberty for that. But uh, trying as much you can to build some structure into that, I think that just sounds really wise yeah. you know, for families. And I, I would say, that, I mean, just looking what kind of goals we set this week are going to be reevaluated. Right on. You know, next yes. week yeah. because things are changing and we really don't know how long this is going to be. Yeah. Um, but I think it's also important to really. Um, Help guide your kids with uh, know that um, they've got to be flexible. Yeah, there's you, you can't hold too tightly to things because it's not the norm. Yeah, I think we're all being forced mm -hmm. because Westerners are so about the future, right? Yeah. We're so much about planning way ahead and yeah. and living in the moment is hard for us sometimes as Westerners. So I think this is really challenged because it is almost an hour by hour, day by day evaluate, and we need great patience, right? And this is something that's hard. For that's us. a great segue into my next question is that now we have um, in this sort of swirling chaos, we have such a great opportunity mm -hmm. to respond differently to the people around us and to reach out into the community where people are, are more willing to talk about um, fear and anxiety and death and all these things that are sort of in our face right now. So what are the opportunities? How can we reach out as Christians? How can we make the most of this time? And I think uh, the really great thing to remember is that people are around us everywhere. Like we have mm -hmm. neighborhoods full of people, usually mm -hmm. most yeah. of us. Yeah. Um, how, what are some creative ways we can do to reach out to them? Because they're all, uh, I know a lot of my neighbors are inside terrified. If you come mm -hmm. to their door, they've got, you know, yeah. the Kleenex and, yeah. and the disinfectant uh -huh. ready and the people are terrified. Yeah. So how do we practically reach out into our community as a church? Um, how do we harness the people we already have to do a great job uh -huh. in reaching out for people? Um, yeah. I, you know, that's a great question. And I think mm -hmm. we all kind of want to get practical with things. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm reminded to go to God first mm -hmm. and ask mm -hmm. him to give me the eyes yes. to see Definitely. where that need is. Take a walk in your neighborhood and um, pray. pray. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I do believe that, or else it becomes a, just a duty, but mm -hmm. um, God can do, do, do so much mm -hmm. more through us yeah. um, when we make of him available to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. yeah. and we, we surrender yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, and I say that even for our students too, you know, for, um, wow, you know, you look at some of your friends and um, they, they, they're really stressed out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just how we um, love one another and how we display that sort of um, peace that we have yeah. um, really speaks loudly. And it's no accident that you know the people you know, right? Like yeah. Your yeah. friends at school, your neighbors around you, it's an yeah, accident that you're there. Yeah, we all have a sphere of there. influence, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that so, God has given us. I, I said to one other pastor, mm -hmm. I said to him, I said, you know, right now it, it feels like there's a way that we would touch people that would be hurtful mm -hmm. toward them mm -hmm. in a way that we could touch people today that would be helpful for mm -hmm. them. So thinking about creatively the helpful ways that mm -hmm. we can touch people. Obviously, physically, we have to distance ourselves. So, But there are lots of creative ways mm -hmm. to think about whether it's writing um, an email or a phone yeah. call or a text. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously there's paper, there's the same thing, but you could write a note, mm -hmm. um, you know, that type of thing, these kinds of things that we can do to encourage people. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard really great stories of people like taking groceries, mm -hmm. dropping them off at mm -hmm. people's doors and things yeah. like that. Um, just checking in on one another, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. on a regular yeah. basis. Mm -hmm. I did that for someone today <clears throat> and I think they really appreciated mm -hmm. it and they're not the kind of people that would necessarily need people in their life. But I just, Lord, laid them on my heart, and I called them, yeah. and I know it meant a lot to them. Yeah. So, And I think as churches, we can harness 
what we already have, like the ministries mm -hmm. we already have, like we have outreach ministries. Um, okay, so these people that we know that come to this basketball program mm -hmm. or this mother's program, or how can we harness the people that are working in those ministries in those to reach out right to the now. people that they know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and I think care is gonna be so big. Mm -hmm. Like our care will set us apart from yep. a lot of the other people who are just afraid. I, I think showing a calmness, mm -hmm. like just not reacting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reaction right now from mm -hmm. buying toilet paper mm -hmm. to, you know, antibacterial, um, you know, stuff. So wipes or whatever it is and stocking up, mm -hmm. hoarding. And I think staying calm and just responding and whether that's in the way we talk to another person and the way we buy and prepare ourselves uh, in the way we relate uh, to our friends and our family, all of that, I yeah. think. Um, and just being understanding. Um, people are quick to judge people's intent, mm -hmm. and uh, let's not do that. Let's, mm -hmm. let's recognize we're all struggling mm -hmm. in the midst of this circumstance. And every person is made up of, of spiritual needs, emotional mm -hmm. needs, safety needs. They're, they're a whole package, so we right. can't just think of the virus. We need to think about their whole beings and how we can reach those. I heard a great story um, about a pastor in Singapore who uh, used this opportunity to spread the gospel by saying, you know, by the way, we were all sick and we're dying of it. Mm -hmm. And we all have this virus that's incurable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And started gospel conversations cool. that way. So I think we have so many great creative inroads that we can use mm -hmm. if like we that. think about it. Yeah. I love Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very um, present help in time of trouble. I always say, I wish it said out of trouble, right. but it says <laughs> in the trouble. And then the psalmist goes on to say, therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. I, I don't, a cataclysmic event, you can't get any bigger than that, mm -hmm. right? And, and yet the Bible says we don't have to fear because mm -hmm. God is our place of safety and he is with us and present and helping us mm -hmm. in the midst of that. So well, that's a good note to end it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks for checking out this video. For more great content, subscribe below.